Hello and welcome to the Football Block. My name is Brandon and today we're going to look back at match day one of Euro 2024. So if that sounds interesting, let's hop right into it. One step So match day one has finally come to a close. Every single one of these teams that have qualified for Euro 2024 have played at least one match. Now let's look back at each and every one of these games, see how these teams have played. And I'm going to give my general analysis of each game, you know, the biggest talking points, the news, stuff like that. And then, you know, maybe look ahead to the next games, what these teams need to do to go forward and you know continue on their winning streak if they're playing well or you know tweak a few things or you know completely completely revamp their style if you know they didn't win their first game or something like that so let's start off with the opening game of the tournament we have germany beating scotland five to one an absolutely crazy result in the opening game of the tournament here um and i have to say it, with the euros you know just the way european teams play and the style of football and of course i'm generalizing here but um the way european teams play it, it seems to be a much more pragmatic and technical style compared to say you know uh, latin america or africa or any other region in the world and then also the euros especially now with so many teams and even especially even more so in the past actually with less teams there was always kind of like i, I guess not that much of a gap between um, all the teams in terms of skill level. So it's very rare that you see huge lopsided results like this. Um, it, I can't remember the last time we saw a massive uh, goal difference between uh, two teams like this, especially in the opening match. And um, part of it is because of how Scotland played. I, I think they were very bad. It, the manager completely got the tactics wrong. They you know, tried to just sit back and absorb the pressure, which was the worst possible thing to do with Germany. But more so, this was an immaculate performance from Germany. Every single player on the pitch had just an amazing game, whether it be Florian Wirtz and Jamal Musiala. I, I mean, both of them, I wasn't sure how they were going to fit into the team together because they're essentially um, players with the same qualities, uh, both coming off great seasons individually as well. Uh, the Nagelsmann was able to get them to work together perfectly. Uh, Kai Havertz was very good uh, in the build-up play as well. Then you also had Emery Chan was getting in on the action as well off the bench. Full Krug was also very good off the bench. Thomas Muller was very good off the bench. But I think the star of the night was Tony Cruz, who's playing in his last Euros. I'm sure you guys heard about the statistics there. He completed every single one of his passes except for one. He had an amazing performance on the night as did all of germany there i mean this was a near 10 out of 10 performance even the goal that they conceded was just a complete accident the ball just pinged around in the box and happened to balance off of rudiger and went into the goal um the goals here that were scored it just the build up play that they had the ruthlessness of this germany this looks like the germany of old and at this moment i think they are the best team in the tournament considering that we've seen every team play again we're only one game into the tournament but considering how all the other teams have played they are the team in the best of form right now uh moving on to the next game we have hungary versus switzerland this was a game that was really interesting in my opinion because i thought that hungary was going into this game as heavy favorites i, I mean you would expect switzerland to maybe have declined a little bit from the world cup um but Hungary had so much hype around this team and I think that was actually their downfall right here as they lost three to one to Switzerland um now Hungary ever since the last Euros is where this hype train started they were drawn into that really tough group with Germany France uh and uh Portugal and they performed well enough unfortunately they did not qualify but they carried that great form into the Nations League in 2022, having some big results against England, for example. Then they were really good in the Nations League in 2023, but they missed out on the 2022 World Cup. So this is the first time since that hype train has started that we've seen them play in uh, a big tournament 
and I think the big occasion got to them. I, I think all the hype got to them because they did not look anything like the team they have been over the past few years. They just, they look so stuck. They look like a, a deer in headlights. And then Switzerland is a team that is playing in every single tournament, it seems going back like maybe 20 years. So they just had much more experience. They're much more clinical, professional on the ball. They completely bossed the first half. There was a moment there where Hungary looked like they could bounce back. They brought it back from two goals down to 2-1. And then they had some chances to tie it up, but they didn't take those chances and then Switzerland hit them on the counter. Moving on to the next game, in the next group, we had Spain versus Croatia, one of the, the biggest matches of this round in terms of just two heavyweight teams going up against each other. And you know, if you watch my uh, prediction videos for both the group stage and my general predictions video, I, I thought that um, Spain was going to do good, but Croatia is a team to watch out for. And at this point, it does not look like that prediction is going to come true because they got completely blitzed 3-0. I mean, the, the performance from the Spanish midfield was absolutely insane. Um, this, they had a really strong midfield of Fabian Ruiz, Pedri, and Rodrigo. And then up top, they had Nico Williams, uh, Laminia Mal, and Morata. All six of those players had a really, really good game. Uh, in particular, the second goal from Fabian Ruiz, where he just completely dribbled past, it seemed like the entire Croatian defense, and then put a really, really nice shot into the bottom corner of the goal. And then also Morata with the opening goal, I mean, I made, a, made a record with uh, his seventh goal in Euro's history. Um, so he's been consistently showing that he can show up in the Euros. Um, there's a lot of things to talk about with the, the Spanish team going forward, positive things, but I think that this 3-0 um, scoreline is is actually um, a little generous to Spain. I, I mean, Croatia looks so slow. Their, their midfield, their defense, they just look so slow to react, the reflexes, things like that. But on the flip side, they did create a lot of chances. In fact, they forced Unai Simon into a lot of saves. Unai Simon had a great first half, and then ironically, made a huge mistake in the second half, forcing Rodrigo to uh, give away a penalty. And then uh, now Croatia missed the penalty, scored the rebound, rebound was judged to be offside or actually encroachment, excuse me. So I, I think Spain was very lucky to come away with a clean sheet here. Um, but you can't look past their immaculate performance from their attack and in particular their midfield. And then also just look at who they can bring off the bench as well. They, You can make an argument they have the best midfield in the tournament like usual when it comes to Spain. Um, the next game we're going to look at in the next game in the group is Italy versus Albania. And this was an interesting game as well. Italy was a team that, um, yeah, of course, are the reigning champions, but they're not necessarily in the best form. They missed the World Cup. A lot of those players that were amazing in Euro 2020 are no longer part of the team or they have declined in form. And I think in this game, you can, you can see that here very visibly. Italy was the better team than Albania, but it was very, very close. In fact, Albania opened, in this, opened the score with the fastest goal in Euro history there. Um, very good build up play from Albania. And while Italy was able to claw back the lead with a you know, very good build up play, um, leading to a set piece goal from Bastoni, and then a really nice strike from Barella, I don't know if Italy really showed they had control over the match. There was moments where Albania looked like they could equalize, but I think Italy's just a more talented team, so they were able to hold on to uh, the lead there and ride out with the three points. Um, the next game we're going to look at is Poland versus Netherlands. And this was a game that was also interesting because this group is essentially the group of death, or at least one of the groups of death, where you have um, Austria, France, Poland, and Netherlands all fighting it out. And I have to say, I think the Netherlands was the better team overall, but it was kind of an unconvincing performance. Maybe not, maybe unconvincing is a little too harsh of a word, but um, it, Poland was a very, very tough opponent for the Netherlands. In fact, Poland, despite not having Lewandowski, who's going to miss this game and potentially the next game through injury, um, opened the score. The guy that replaced uh, Lewandowski at the top actually is the one that opened the score there. Um, now, Netherlands had a lot of chances there, and I think after that defensive mishap, they were able to you know, basically batten down the hatches, and they looked fine throughout the rest. Um, but it just if you look at a guy like Memphis Depay, his service was... A little disappointing um there were some other attackers there that just they just didn't have enough uh output 
And uh, Cody Gakpo had a great game, but it wasn't until Wout Weghorst came off the bench. They had a, a true number nine into the team. That's how they grabbed the winner there. Literally almost minutes after coming on the pitch, he scores uh, the winner there. So I think going forward, Netherlands, despite not having a world-class center forward, I, I think they're going to have to rely on Wout Weghorst. Like that, that's just how the team plays better when they have uh, you know, a center forward like that. I'm very surprised that they didn't bring Luke de Jong either. Um, anyway, on to the next game, we have Slovenia versus Denmark. And this was a uh, another interesting game as well. It ended up being very, very close. Um, Slovenia is a team that I think could potentially uh, be a team to watch out for. But if you just look at them on paper, obviously, um, there's not many names that pop off of the page. On the flip side, Denmark is a team that was obviously very good at the last Euros, made it to the World Cup. And while, yes, they did have a disappointing performance, they still have a team full of very talented players. Um, and you could see that in the opening half there. They had some, you know, really good chances. Christian Eriksen was getting on the ball a lot, and he scored a very, very nice goal, which was really cool to see considering what happened last Euros uh, with this whole uh, health scare there with the, his heart condition and stuff like that. So per, as a personal story to see uh, Christian Eriksen score there was, was a wonderful scene. Um, but Denmark, I feel, just didn't capitalize on all the chances that they had in the first half, and slowly but surely... Slovenia started growing into the match and they started getting more and more chances. Sesko in particular, I think, had a really good game. Um, and while, yes, the goal that Slovenia did ultimately score was a bit lucky, it still was a deserved goal. And this match, I think, very deservedly finished 1-1 on the night. Next up, we have Serbia versus England. And this is a game that had a lot of eyes on it. Obviously, everyone is talking about England. A lot of people have them as the outright favorites. And I have to admit, while England did come away with a 1-0 win, this was a very dull and boring victory. And not that surprising, if I'm being honest. This was a typical Southgate performance. England had some good chances going into the first few minutes of the match. They eventually scored early on. Great header from uh, Drew Bellingham. And then they kind of just sat back and absorbed pressure. And at, there was times where Serbia looked really threatening, but not really enough. Um, and I think that just has to do with the team that Serbia has. There really isn't a creative spark in the team besides maybe Dusan Tadic. And interestingly enough, he didn't start. He had to come off, uh, in, off the bench in the second half. I think that was... Um, not the best decision from the Serbian manager there. And Serbia's defense is pretty strong. I, I mean, England didn't have a whole host of chances. I think Serbia defended fine. But going forward, they just didn't have that, that creative spark. There wasn't any avenues for any creativity or, or dynamicism or anything like that, which played right into uh, Gareth Southgate's book. Obviously, he was able to maintain a clean sheet for his team right here. But... You just look at this English team, you look at all these creative players that they have, and you just are, you know, you almost want to beg Southgate and just remove all these restrictions and rules on them and just, just let them go forward and attack. But, you know, that's that's not how Southgate is. He seems to be very, very set in his ways. Moving on to the next match, we have Romania versus Ukraine, and this was a crazy match. Many people, including myself, thought that Romania was one of the teams to just kind of pass over, that they're not really going to do much this tournament. And on the flip side, Ukraine might be a team that um, could make some, some splash waves in this tournament. They have some talented players, and this could not have been more of the opposite of what people thought. Uh, Ukraine got completely blitzed. Um, there was a moment there in the first half where they looked to be getting on the ball to create some chances, but then Romania, once they got a hold of the match, they never they never lost control of it. They played really well, three really nice goals. Now, you know, you can criticize Lunin. I, I think that um, Lunin has been getting some harsh criticism. I think only really the second goal was his fault, but even still, it was it's a hard shot to say. There were so many uh, players in between him and the ball had a lot of pace on it. Um, Ukraine had some chances to uh, grab at least a consolation goal at the end of the match, but it was too little, too late. Uh, very convincing win for Romania, and it's also a goal, a game that makes history for the Romanian national team. Their first win at the Euro since Euro 2000, 24 years ago. Uh, after that, let's talk about 
Slovakia versus Belgium. This is the first real upset of the tournament. Um, now, I think that this Belgian team has heavily declined since the World Cup and also since the last Euros. And they also have an injury crisis in their back line with so many guys getting injured. And then it's not to say that their back line was necessarily great before the injuries as well. But still, the fact that they lost to this Slovakia team who, you know, I argued before the tournament might be the worst team in the entire Euros is still an absolutely crazy result here, especially when you look at how the game turned out. I, I mean, there was two chances in the first five minutes that Belgium really should have scored. One from Lewandowski, one from Trossard. If they score those, if they score those two chances or one of those two chances, that completely changes the complexity of the match. But they did not. And then Slovakia, relatively, you can say maybe they got lucky. They scored after uh, an error from Castiles, the Belgian goalkeeper who's stepping in for Courtois because Courtois is having this whole, uh, you know, he had this fallout with the manager, so he uh, he's not going to be in uh, the team for the tournament. And then from that moment on, I think that while, yes, Belgium had a lot of chances and they also had two goals that they scored but were disallowed, um, unluckily so, you know, the the way that Slovakia played, though, they managed this game perfectly, in my opinion. The way they defended as a unit, the way that um, they went forward, they chose their moments, they were pretty, pretty solid at the back as well. And overall, a very, very good team performance from Slovakia. It'll be very interesting to see where they go forward from here. Um, now let's move on to the uh, next match of that same day. We had Austria versus uh, France. And Austria is another team that many people had high expectations for, including myself. And while they did lose this game 1-0, I don't think it was a bad performance from Austria. I think they actually played pretty well, all things considered. Um, they limited France to very, very few chances. The only goal that France did score was from an own goal, a very unlucky own goal off of Vaubert's head after a cross from Mbappe. Um, and on, on France's perspective, I think it was actually a bit of a disappointing performance from France. I, I think defensively, they were fine. They didn't give away a whole lot of chances, but in terms of their attack, I thought Dembele had a terrible game. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because I'm biased because I don't like Dembele. I just you know, objectively just did not have a good game. I think Taram did not really do much either. Mbappe, despite you know his cross leading to the goal, didn't really do much. He missed uh, some serious chances as well. And then Griezmann was not his normal creative self. I, I think the Austrian defense did a good job of kind of containing him, but still it was, it was a little disappointing. Uh, one player to point out, though, is N'Golo Kante, who is, interestingly enough, starting in this team, despite now playing in the Saudi League for Al, Al Itahad. He was the man of the match, in my opinion. It looked like we were watching Kante in 2021 or 2016 or 2017. Uh, prime N'Golo Kante showed up in this match. He just ran tirelessly, participated in the attack, was very good defensively as well. Um, I was very surprised to see his name on the team sheet starting. But after that performance, I'm not surprised at all. Like I said, he was the best player on the pitch there. Now let's move on to the second to last match we're going to talk about. We had Turkey versus Georgia. And I think just in terms of, from a neutral point of view, just in terms of pure enjoyment, this was the best game of the tournament so far. Uh, and ended on the night 3-1 to Turkey. But that doesn't tell the whole story. Georgia are going into this tournament um, as de debutantes, this is the first time they have ever made it to a major tournament, not just the Euros. And I think they played pretty admirably, all things considered. Um, this game was back and forth. It really could have gone either way. I, Turkey dominated the early proceedings of the match. They almost raced to a 2-0 lead. One of their goals was called off for offside, though. Um, then Georgia put themselves right back in the match, equalized with a very nice goal, um, and then had chances to to gain the lead. Eventually would have been Turkey that would take the lead after an amazing goal from Arda Guler. Um, and then even then, Georgia had some really close chances. It went all the way down to the wire where they had a set piece um, that they almost scored off of in the last minute of the game, but because their goalkeeper was up, they lost the ball, and then Turkey was able to score a third goal there. Uh, my fear is that the way that this match ended is going to demoralize the Georgian team, and then they won't be able to replicate this admirable and honorable performance in the next few games, but hopefully they'll be able to build off of this, this tough but good performance here. 
The last game we're going to look at is Portugal versus Czech Republic. Um, and this was a game that I was excited for, obviously, as a Portugal fan. And I have to say the Portugal team, is, in some ways, was a little disappointing. Um, defensively, I thought they were okay. Uh, you know, they weren't really tested. Uh, Czech Republic is a team that was going to sit back, of course. And then Czech Republic actually opened the score there with a really nice strike. But you have to admit, it was against the run of play. Uh, but Portugal looked kind of short of ideas. Uh, there wasn't a lot of creativity, which is crazy to say when you look at just the attacking talent that they have in this team. Um, they would equalize after a Nuno Mensch cross, which just deflected into the net after an own goal there. Um, but I, I think once they got back into the game and then once Roberto Martinez started making changes to the team, you started to see what this Portugal team can do. Um, they were a little lucky with the winner there, Conceição coming off the bench and scoring a, a deflected goal there. But a goal is a goal, a win is a win. Portugal do need to heavily improve if they want to go far in this tournament. Um, and as for Ronaldo, he did start and a lot of people have been criticizing him saying that, you know, he's playing in the Saudi league now. He shouldn't start for this team. I have to admit, I, I think that he actually had a really good game. He was very unlucky not to score. He had some really good chances um, and he looked quick on the ball. He had good his reflexes were, were normal. He had just good positioning and stuff like that. I think he deserved his starting role and I hope he continues to play like this throughout the rest of the tournament. But anyway, guys, that has been my reaction to all of the games in the first match day of Euro 2024. Let me know what you think of these matches here. What was your favorite match? What was your favorite goal? Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below. My personal favorite game, just from a neutral point of view, was Turkey versus Georgia. And my personal favorite goal was Fabian Ruiz's amazing dribble to make it 2-0 to Spain over Croatia. Like I said, let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share this video with a friend. Follow the Football Block on social media. But anyway, guys, my name is Brandon. This has been the Football Block, and I hope you have a nice rest of your night. One step beyond.